Apple has had a long relationship with video games. Bungie was originally a Mac developer before Microsoft purchased them, and Apple's App Store is quite possibly the biggest market for games on Earth. So, with Apple doing so well in the mobile market and continuing to find success with their computers, why haven't they ever released a gaming computer? Today, we're going to answer that question once and for all. You got my attention. There aren't going to be any shocking revelations about Apple as a company, but once you begin to understand the larger moves Apple makes, its relationship with games becomes a lot more clear. But with more and more games coming to Mac, and as the age of game streaming approaches, more and more people are wondering why Apple doesn't make gaming computers. If you've ever wondered this yourself, you're in the right place. So strap in, and let's break down our answer for why Apple doesn't make gaming computers. Apple has targeted the same type of consumer for decades. This thing is for the everyman, right? That's our end user. Students, professionals, and all those with enough expendable income to appreciate the generally luxuriant build quality and ease of use Apple products are known for. Though iPhones and Macs have seen their prices drop in recent years, Apple continues not to market or design their devices to be affordable enough and useful enough for the average person without a somewhat special use. While gamers today come in all colors and stripes, gaming hardware and dedicated gaming devices are usually budget-focused. This is becoming especially relevant in the face of the extraordinary deal that is Games Pass, as well as the next-generation game price increase from $60 to $70 for AAA games. Consoles routinely are designed around a $250 to $500 price point, and while GPU manufacturers like Nvidia have entire suites of cards, their cards in the middle to low end are always the most successful. Not only are gamers not Apple's target market, Apple's brand of expensive, luxuriant design would be a terrible fit for the gaming world, appealing to only a tiny subset of consumers. Games have been so expensive for so long that an expensive Apple gaming PC coming at the moment when streaming services and subscription packages are just now making new games cheap would not be well received. And as with all incredibly high-end luxury tech products, the market for the seller would be razor thin, and the price to the consumer would be extraordinarily high, considering Apple's track record of pricing. But while Microsoft and Sony have developed arms that produce games for gamers to play on their systems to claw back some of the money lost on hardware, Apple isn't structured to do this. Games are a huge business, but for Apple to jump in, it would require massive amounts of cash, lots of time to produce, and would take years in the market to see actual success, while there are other moves Apple could make in less time to make more money. In short, Apple's brand of design and target audience don't overlap much with gamers looking for a new gaming PC. This is, of course, not to say Apple doesn't have the resources to develop a killer gaming Mac. But it is to say that, considering the past and current suite of Apple products, it's not likely for the company to do a 180 and start building gaming computers or consoles for anyone and everyone, like Nintendo, and nor is it likely that a high-end, super-niche gaming Mac would do well in the market. More and more games every year come to Mac, though the Mac library isn't nearly as robust as other gaming platforms. And with the advent of game streaming, local hardware is becoming more and more academic. Games can be played everywhere these days. This might sound like something Apple could lean into and design a new Mac around, but that's not really the case. Because of the relative availability of games on Mac, users on Mac can and do play games. They may not have all the options, but they have enough not to feel the need to spend the money on a high-end Mac gaming computer, because there are many more games available on Windows PCs that run better than their Mac counterparts, and cost much less, too. If there were, for some reason, no games on Mac, Apple might see success launching a line of Macs that do all their normal things and game. But Macs can already play games, and if Apple were to simply open up the Mac OS ecosystem to more hardware and software compatibility, existing Macs would become gaming Macs, completely eliminating the need to design a bespoke gaming computer. If consoles or Windows PCs weren't cheaper and had larger libraries and ran games better, a high-end gaming Mac that can play Mac OS games really well might make sense. Today, the next-gen PS5 and Xbox Series X at MSRP are much more powerful than a PC at the same price point. 
So even if Apple somehow provided a way to game cheaper than PCs, consoles would be cheaper still, with larger libraries. Though, right now, the next-gen consoles are priced around what an entry-level gaming Mac would probably cost. Unfortunately, the software side of the equation makes it so that it doesn't make sense for a consumer serious enough about gaming to spend decent money on it to go out and buy a Mac, even if there was a gaming Mac on store shelves. Like the many dedicated gaming devices of the past not from Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo that eventually died, a good gaming system is more than even just capable hardware and solid design. You need a healthy ecosystem of content creation and a suite of software and tools to facilitate this, none of which Apple has. But Apple does have an ecosystem of its own that the company has been increasingly focused on maintaining. Even if Apple decided to target a new, larger audience, build a device the average consumer might want to buy, and even use their cash to develop exciting and new experiences just for Mac OS, this would fly in the face of the company's trend of the last number of years, unification. This elegance and interconnectivity between Apple devices has become a major selling point for the company in recent years. Apple has been making moves to eliminate the barriers between iOS, iPadOS, macOS, and their hardy variety of accessories and peripherals, so that using an Apple product, any Apple product, can be as seamless an experience as possible. Ultimately, this would mean an app going up on the App Store would be accessible on any device, be it a tablet, a phone, a computer, or an Apple TV. This would not mean Apple leaning into bespoke experiences for a single platform, macOS. macOS and macOS computers, while an iconic part of Apple's history, aren't a huge part of Apple's bottom line today. This being more determined by iPhone and iPad sales. It may seem strange that Apple, originally known as Apple Computer Company, doesn't rely heavily on the creation and selling of computers, but this is the case today. It makes less sense for Apple to even target the gaming PC consumer when they would likely have much more success selling a gaming iPhone. While the Apple ecosystem is undoubtedly a walled garden, Apple knows how easy it is to overwhelm a consumer with a long list of app stores and compatibility issues when working with different classes of a device. Launching a line of computers or suite of software aimed specifically and exclusively at macOS gamers doesn't feel in line with Apple's priorities, considering the company's multi-platform existence. Do you think we're ever going to see an Apple gaming computer? Will Apple ever try to get in on the money in the games industry outside of mobile? Let us know what you think in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe to us here at The Gamer and ring the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos.